We've seen before that we get hydrostatic pressure from a, a fluid at rest so that pressure increases as we go down in elevation. Now if we look at the Navier-Stokes equation for conservation of momentum in the y direction, that's the fundamental equation balancing all of the forces and that's where we can get that uh, pressure variation from. If the velocity is zero, all of the velocity components, u, v, and w, will be zero. This term cancels out this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one all cancel out. The only terms that are left are the pressure gradient term and the gravity term. And as a result, the change in pressure is rho g times the change in height if the velocity is zero, that is, if the fluid's static. But that's not the only condition under which we'll have a hydrostatic variation in pressure. So, for example, consider the situation where the V component of velocity is equal to zero. U and W might have non-zero values, but V is equal to zero. Di V, Di T, still zero. Di V, Di X, Di Y, Di Z, all still zero. So those terms are all still zero. Di V, Di X squared, Di V, Di Y squared, Di 2 V, Di Z squared, all zero. So we don't actually have to have everything being equal to zero, all the velocities equal to zero, in order to have hydrostatic variation in the y direction, the vertical direction. We just have to have the vertical velocity equal to zero. And in fact, we don't even have to have the vertical velocity equal to zero. If we have a frictionless system, so there's no friction in the fluid, so neglecting viscosity, all of those terms will go away. If, in addition, all of these terms together are equal to zero, even if individually they might not be equal to zero, then what that means is that the fluid particles are not accelerating in the y direction. That is, there's no acceleration in the up or down direction then we're back again to just having hydrostatic pressure. Only these two terms in the equation. So any time that we have no acceleration in the y direction and viscous friction is negligible, we'll see hydrostatic pressure in the vertical direction. <coughs> so if the fluid isn't accelerating in the y direction, then the pressure will be hydrostatic in the y direction pressure forces will balance gravity, there's no other forces, and the fluid doesn't accelerate. So if we look at a situation like this, for instance, flow moving down a river, where the river bed rises like this, initially the flow is all moving along parallel to the river bed, there's no vertical velocity, the pressure's hydrostatic in Y. Later on, it's all moving along parallel to the river bed, there's no V velocity, there's no acceleration in the vertical direction, and the pressure's hydrostatic. In this region in here, the fluid is accelerating in the Y direction. This particle of fluid is going from a zero Y velocity up to a positive Y velocity, and back to a zero Y velocity again. In here, in this region only, the pressure won't be hydrostatic. And let's look at the consequences. Curvature of streamlines will tell us something about what the acceleration is. If I look at a particle on this streamline, as it moves around there, it's accelerating towards the center of the curve. So on the inside of a curved set of streamlines, the pressure will be lower than on the outside of a curved set of streamlines, all on top of the variation due to hydrostatic pressure variation in elevation. Likewise, if I have straight streamlines, even if the velocities are different at different positions vertically, if the streamlines are straight, if they don't curve, then there's no acceleration. And the pressure variation across those straight parallel streamlines will be hydrostatic. So if this is the vertical direction, the pressure will increase as we go down. If this is a horizontal direction, then the pressure will be constant. Same pressure here, here, and here, all the way down. If there was a difference in pressure, that would result in an unbalanced force. That would result in some acceleration of the fluid in this direction or in that direction, and that would result in curved streamlines off in one direction or another. 
So if the streamlines continue on in a straight line, then there can't be any unbalanced transverse pressure forces, so the pressure variation across these parallel straight streamlines must be hydrostatic.